The Blue Raven Passage 1 The Not-So-Silent Night Chirp 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 swus swus swoo Ka 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 The sound plays on throughout the night Almost no one in camp is awake to hear these sounds The men are asleep for the night and the women are in what few houses are available the men dressed in blue coats alike to one another lay quiet unaware of the symphony above their heads. The women are looking after the sleeping kids indoors. Beginning their final rounds they notice a single empty bed. A bed that belongs to the only man who stays indoors. They look in the room barely big enough to hold his bed frame. They look at the wall opposite his bed. The musket and hatchet that hangs when he rests are gone, they see the tiny window leading to the small cramped overlook wide open. Looking out to the wild they see the trail of dirt he left behind from his overused boots worn to the bare solace from years of running, climbing, jumping, and rolling. The youngest and most agile of the men in camp the women think to themselves. Like a bird too fast for the naked eye he is always here and there but yet not at all at the same time. His sounds are as silent as the moonlight yet when desired can rival that of cannon and musket fire. Once again the raven has taken flight the women say aloud. They leave him some rations on the foot of his bed for when he returns and leave the window cracked just enough to be opened from the outside. The man had lost his parents the father a veteran of his respective war. It was lost in the opening shots of the current one. A father who once proudly waved the colors of the crown had dared to wave the flag of a new nation on the path for representation. And a mother who sadly passed trying to save her dearest. The raven dressed in blue ever since that night had learned to take flight. Years of training from his father a man of pride and combat had always paved the way for his raven to be ready for the night he would flee the nest. The only item to be passed down to his little bird was but a single coat of a hoodless design. A coat that resembles many of what their fellow men wear to war. All except for the imprint of a rose on the back. A symbol of a city that is an ocean away and yet is also that of a new one to grow. As the raven takes roost in the tallest tree he looks down on the growing city its oil lit candles and lamps visible from the many miles between the camp and itself. His musket is slung over his back, his hatchet is held in his off hand, and that is when the night goes silent. The bird of prey closes his eyes and inhales sharply. These woods are his home and he knows the smells. The smells that are carrying through the starting autumn air. The bark of the tree, the dirt down below, the deer in the tall grass, and the hascap berries to the north he can smell them all. Hmm, hascap, those are not in season. And that is when the raven points his head in the direction and opens his eyes. And he sees his prey no more than a few hundred feet or so, even in the night and the lack of camp light. He can see the coats in question they are red like that of a lobster. Once upon a time, these mere prey would be his fellow countrymen but to the eyes of the raven dressed in blue. These men were not from this new world no they were from the old one. One where crowns were the way of life and a family's pomp and circumstance can influence nations. But not this one and he knew those coats did not like that. Coats and prey, that is all they are to the raven, 
never men, never people, they are things that are not human to him. These coats and prey come from a world he never wants to know a world he wants dead. He wants his prey dead, and so they are. He barely considers the mere seconds it takes to descend onto them. Never takes notice of the fractions of a moment he requires to take their coats, to slice through the flesh nor does he notice less than a minute has passed, and yet the ten lobsters in human sewn coats lay there spilling what is red on the inside onto the outside. And yet he still cares not. He takes the flag of their dead world he takes to the skies. The flag is then dropped at the foot of another man's bed. The raven crawls into his nest. And he falls to rest as the sun begins to form its crest.